Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this Luxurgy tutorial. I've looked around in the internet for a similar video tutorial for any sound changer, not just Luxurgy, but I couldn't find anything, so I thought I might do it myself. I can do Luxurgy kind of well, I think. I use it uh, for my recent conlangs, so I think, uh, I think I may be somewhat qualified to do this. Uh, but I'm no expert, I want to put that clear here, and I'm no historical linguist or anything like that, so yeah. Also, this video isn't about how to develop sound changes, how to make them, but rather how to apply them in Luxurgy. If you want to see how to make sound changes, I will maybe make a video on that in the future, but uh, up until then I've put some links in the description for very good source videos which I used uh, as the basis for all of my conlangs up until now, so yeah. Well, Luxurgy, at least the web app which uh, this tutorial will focus on, is uh, divided into three parts. The input words, the sound changes and the output. The input words are uh, the words you've put uh, you put in as your proto language. So I will just try to put some not talk, not talk. I will just try to put some input words here, some basic words. Uh, then sound changes are well the main thing happens where you list out your the things that should happen, and then the output is the result of the application in the modern language. If you want, you can save your sound changes or anything of that. It will save into a special file format onto your computer and you can then load it in. I have this as the latest Luxurgy thing I downloaded. Uh, well, now let's get on to the sound changes, shall we? Uh, Luxurgy differs from other sound changers uh, in that each sound change has to have a name. So, for example, we can say that this is K loss. If you want to make a new sound change, you have to put in here this, uh, the name, without any spaces or anything else, and then put the colon here, I think it's called a colon, the two dots, and you need to press enter, and uh, then you write your sound change. But I also like to put a space here, or two spaces, uh, so that I see when where the name ends and the sound change begins. It just makes it uh, easily visible. We want, for example, to turn K into T. You would do it like this. Put the K, then equal sign, greater than sign, and then the T. The spaces here are mandatory. You have to put them in, unless uh, you, uh, if you don't do that, uh, like search will scream and the output an error. Also, if you want to put spaces anywhere in the anywhere else where it's not necessarily mandatory to put them, uh, you can. How you can? It's just a stylistic aesthetic thing. So don't worry if you have like thousand spaces here. I usually have that. So now, if we have the K loss and we want to apply it, you just click the apply button and it does exactly what you think it would do. Minak turns into minat, natak turns into natat, and so on. Atat. For example, if you want to delete the sound altogether, uh, you put this asterisk here to signify that it is lost. So if we put that, then mina would turn into minak, would turn into mina, natak into nata, and so on. But uh, these changes usually uh, constitute an environment in which they occur. Uh, in Luxurgy you get with a slash, as in other sound changers, and then you put the environment. So for example, if I want K to be lost after an A, I would do it like this. This is the place where the K should be, and this is all the other stuff that it interacts with. So K is lost after A would be written as this if I apply it, and it works as expected. Tanik isn't changed because it's before E, not before an A. If you want to do it, for example, at the end of words, most sound changers would uh, do it like this, but this symbol is actually used for comments in Luxurgy, so you need to put in the dollar sign to do that. So uh, K is lost at the end of words, 
would be a, would be something like this. You can see that the K here is preserved because um, it is not on the end of the word. Now we have this sound change. If you want to add other sound changes, for example, a loss, which could work the exact same. then you can do it. To get rid of the inputs in this uh, column, in the output, you just need to click this inputs button, which will turn them off. If you just want to copy them into your lexicon or something. Now, when we have two rules, I can explain uh, this thing, to, which just makes this uh, interaction with the sum changes easier. You can have the start at rule, which just starts at the rule you choose. This will skip the K loss rule and start in the A loss rule. So no words will change because I don't have anything like so Anna, Anna would turn into An. But uh, no other words will change if we can see that. The K is just, the K loss is just uh, omitted. The stop before rule works the exact same, but it just ignores all rules after the rule you put in it and the rule itself so a loss wouldn't be applied here Anna would stay Anna. and then lastly we have the trace evolution uh, you choose a word which you want to trace the evolution of uh, so if i want to uh, trace the evolution of natak uh, into nat i can see the natak turned into nata and then nata to nat also if you want to do exceptions for example, that K should be lost at the end of words, but uh, except before A, uh, you can put it here with two slashes and then the environment in which it doesn't occur. So for example, this would be K is lost at the end of words, but not before A. This is how it would look if we apply it. You can also insert sounds. So for example, I think uh, some Indonesian languages do this a insertion j insertion i don't know how to spell uh, you can insert a ya sound before any before for example a at the start of words so this will turn nothing the, the asterisk is like nothing will turn into ya if it is between the start of word and an a so, Jan, Jakab, and such. There is also an, one other symbol which I don't use as often, but it is good to show it. It's called a wildcard. It looks like this uh, two square brackets next to each other. Anything can be this thing. So, if I want to lose anything at the end of a word, I, at the start of a word, I would just put this well, put at the end of a word here. So anything is lost at the end of a word. It doesn't matter if it's a consonant, a vowel, or if it's, for example, a hyphen. I think this is called a hyphen. Why Alexergy is, I think, better than other sound changers? You can declare symbols. Uh, if we want to, for example, have a Africa Tsan, of Africa tsa in the word tsan, and I want, for example, uh, then I want t to k, doesn't matter really, and I put t to k, then this tsan turns into ksa, which is which it really shouldn't, it should be staying tsa. Uh, to resolve this issue, you would put a symbol here, it uh, should go before all the sound changes. Uh, these symbol declarations and you put a symbol tsa here and then it treats the tsa as a separate symbol which is very good uh, especially if you have for example diacritics or anything like that and then you can add uh, special stuff onto these symbols which is very cool if you want to turn more sounds into one into one environment for example this a loss could be a vowel loss vowels are lost and the end of words, uh, we can do it with these uh, curly brackets and you put all the sounds 
that you want to apply on this sound change, you put them here and they should be separated by a comma and a space. So A, E, E, O and U are all vowels. So we have these five vowels. We'll turn like into nothing at the end of words. You can see that here if we apply it. Uh, you can also uh, put them into the exceptions and uh, environments. So for example, I can copy this here. And if any sound, if I have like ima, ina, any vowel is at the start of the word, ye, j is inserted, ya or j, however you want to say it, is inserted uh, before it. We can also do one for one substitution with these sounds. For example, we can say that Ta and ka turns into ka and ta. We want them switched. Ta turns into ka and ka turns into ta. We can do that like this. The first uh, thing in the first list turns into the first thing in the second list. Then the second thing in the second uh, first list turns into the second thing in the second list and so on. I can do, for example, pa turns into ba and I can put in here pina, piana and turns into piano. Yeah, uh, if we don't have enough of them, I can show this. It will show an error that there aren't as that isn't the same amount of uh, them on the right side as on the left side. When using, for example, these vowels, it is quite hard always to copy and paste these uh, this whole long segment if you want to use it in any role. So each segment, each of these curly brackets, can be turned into a class. A class, essentially, is just the segment that's all, that always says the same. So, for example, I can do... Uh, uh, you put them before your... Um, before all of the rules. You put class, then the name of the class, which should be vowel, and then the declaration which looks like this, this. If you want to access this class, you do at, and then the name of the class, which is vowel. So any vowel turns into nothing at the end of words, which, as you see, works exactly the same. You can do vowel, or you can, for example, do class nasal, which would be like m, n, n, and turn this n into a symbol and we can say for example that um, vowel nasal swap loss that if you for example have a nasal it turns into a nothing if it's um, I don't know before a vowel if it's before a vowel uh, if it's after a vowel doesn't really matter it's just a showcase that you can have more than one the last thing I will show you in the basician example, which is an example you can find here, is the comments. If you want to make a comment, you will put an hashtag uh, anywhere in your, not code, anywhere in your sound changer and just type anything. And it wouldn't do anything to the code. If I do the, if I type anything here, it doesn't understand that this isn't the rule, so you need to put uh, so we need to put the comment sign, the hashtag here, so it understands that this is a comment rule. Yeah, comment, and you can put it even in the rules, rules, or I think that you can put it here, um, but I'm not sure. Yes, you can put it anywhere you want. So. Once you know all this, this is the, just the basic stuff, you can look on the examples, which I don't know what, what does this. You can open the Bayesian example, and this is the example that the developers use to showcase the things we've just learned. You can look at this and now you understand. Now you should understand everything that I've just said. Now, how do I get back here? 
Well, after this section, I continued the video for a bit, but then I realized that I didn't have enough time to show you all the stuff that I wanted to show you, so I'm gonna probably turn this into a series now. Uh, this is just the basic examples, you can use this for pretty much all of the con links you can think of, but the more advanced stuff will be coming later. Yeah, so thank you for watching and goodbye.